Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We welcome everyone joyfully to this Wednesday service in Holy Week. We particularly thank God for the lives of our brothers and sisters joining us online. Wherever we are is holy ground, and the Lord will reach out to each of us in a special way in Jesus' name. We will sing from the English Methodist hymn book, the hymn 22. Come, let us all unite and sing the hymn 22. Let us please reach out for our Holy Communion pamphlet, page one, item number three. Let us please give the appropriate response. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us all please be seated as we take the collect of purity as contained on item number four. 
the love will take it together. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 2, item number 5b, the commandment of the Lord Jesus. Again, let us give the corresponding response. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these your laws in our hearts, we beseech you. Beloved people of God, let us now confess our sins to God as found on item number six, page three, together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The church will say a living amen. amen. We continue in prayer. We'll take the collect. I will take it on our behalf. Eternal God, in your tender love towards the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh and to suffer death upon a cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and share in the glory of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us all sit right as we take the reading of the scriptures. The first reading for this service is taken from the book, the Epistle of Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're reading from from verses 4 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. This is the word of the Lord.
What is the Lamb? Please let us be upstanding for the gospel reading. Um, the 13th chapter of the gospel according to St. John. We commence reading from verse 20. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, and, and testified and said, most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Of whom he spoke, sorry. Then, leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him. For some thought, because Judas had the money box that Jesus had said to him, buy those things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Having received the, bread, the piece of bread, he then went out immediately, and it was night. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him immediately. Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of Christ. Be to Christ our Lord. The hymn 431, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Hymn 431.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Week and the remembrance of the path that our Lord Jesus tried trod over 2,000 years ago. Father Lord, open our hearts to hear your word today and to be able to love you more and to appreciate that which our Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed for us at the cross of Calvary. Amen. Amen. Uh, good evening, and um, you're welcome to this service. Um, first and foremost, let me thank our Father in the Lord, the chaplain, the very Reverend Dr. D.J. Richards, for the opportunity to minister today. Um, the central theme for the conference, Methodist Conference area this year is Rise and Build. That's Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18. And the sub theme for today uh, is Love, a New Commandment. I'll be taking my text from John 13, verse 34. What is love? And what is a commandment? Everybody bandies what love around the whole place. You meet somebody today and say, ah, I love you. Um, so what exactly is love? And we all hear about commandments here and there. What is a commandment? Now, the first Bible reading that we read today actually defines love very well. Love is patient, it is kind, love is not jealous, love is not boastful, love is not rude. Love doesn't demand its own way. Uh, love is not irritable. Love keeps no record of being wronged. Love does not rejoice about injustice, but it rejoices whenever truth wins over untruth. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful and it endures through every circumstance. The Bible also says that prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and having special knowledge will become useless one day, but love will last forever. And that's the definition of love, New Living Translation. It speaks our own language, the English that we understand. Now, what is a commandment? A commandment is simply a divine rule, something that is commanded, in this case, by God. For example, the Ten Commandments. Love has been with us for as long as we know. Why then did Jesus Christ say, this is a new commandment? Why did Jesus Christ say that? My text John 13, 34. It says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. I was doing some research and I looked at a Bible commentary which says that the new commandment was new in that the love that was to be exercised towards others is different from the love that we used to have. It's a love that belonged to Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus Christ said, the way I've loved you. If you look at the life of Jesus Christ, the love he had for his disciples was special. And they knew that. So when he was talking about the new com uh, commandment, it was, it was really new. It wasn't the love of love your neighbor as yourself. It was a different kind of love. I'll give us a bit of context of the new commandment. If you read the Bible passage that we read earlier, there's a part of it which says that he um, used the expression little children. These were adults. But he referred to them as his little children. Lovingly, the way we love our children. That was the way Jesus Christ referred to his disciples. And that was because he knew that his time on earth was coming to an end. It was preparing them 
for what was going to happen in the next coming days. And he wanted them to know how he felt about them, the love he had for them. This off. You know, sometimes when you're going on a journey and you tell your children, oh, I'm traveling for a few days and, you know, you say, okay, you can have this, you can have that. You know, give them some treats before you travel just so that they wouldn't feel you traveling. And it was something similar to that that says, little children, so that they could feel the love he felt for them. And that was what he was trying to say. He said, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I'm going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, that's John 13, 33. He was telling them he was going somewhere, but this wasn't a journey they could go with him. And he was telling them that to love one another. It's a different kind of loving your neighbor as yourself. You know, sometimes people don't love themselves. Am I lying? There are times when you don't feel like loving yourself. But this is not that kind of love. Whereby, if you don't feel like loving yourself, it's okay. It's a different kind of love. Now, what's new about this new commandment? Love one another. There's an Asian commandment that says, You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19.18. So it's been in the Bible that we should not take vengeance. And if you're not supposed to take vengeance, that means you need to love them. But this is a different kind of love. It's that love that you said, I, as I have loved you. So it's new. It's a new kind of love. And that relates to us. It's a love that we have for ourselves that we are actually supposed to have. As true Christians, we're supposed to have that kind of love for ourselves as Christians. It's a love whereby there's no difference between you and I. It doesn't matter where we come from. It doesn't matter what tribe we are. It's a love that Jesus Christ had for us. That's what a true Christian really is. It's a love where when you see the person, you see Christ in them. You don't see where they come from. You don't look at their accent. You don't look at their tribe. You don't look at their country. You don't say this person is a Jew. That person is Palestinian. No. As a Christian, the love Jesus Christ is talking about is the love he had for his, his, his uh, disciples. That's why it's a new commandment. And in our um, only communion leaflet. It's there also a new commandment. It's new. It is not love your neighbor as yourself. It's if you believe you are a true Christian, that is the love we must have for one another. In this church, that's the love we must have. Forget where anybody comes from. It doesn't matter. Once you are a Christian, that's the love we must have. And it's a new commandment. It's divine. Jesus Christ has commanded us. You know, there are many things that we do as Christians that some people say, oh, it's not biblical, it's not scriptural. This one, it did here. It is Jesus Christ himself. It's not a practice. It's a commandment he has given us. Now, as Christians, we must love one another the way he loves us. And we all know the way he loves us. He died for us. What more sacrifice can that be? He died for us. So, what is very important for us in this new commandment is we must re-examine ourselves and say, if I am a true Christian, then this new commandment, love one another, is very important that we must do that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the love that you have for us. The love that you've commanded that we have for one another. Lord, create in us a new heart. Remove the heart of stone that we have and give us a heart of flesh. That we may be able to do that which you've called us to do. 
that we're able to love one another, even as you have loved us. Amen. Please let us rise up to our feet in response to the message we have just heard. And let's say the Nicene Creed together. It's on page five of our Holy Communion pamphlet. The Nicene Creed, what do you believe? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us all, and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated and let us pray. The steadfast love of the Lord never sees His mercy is never come to As we have heard the new commandments that we love others as we love ourselves let us pray to God that he gives us a heart of love for not just ourselves alone but for others around us in the mighty name of Jesus almighty God our heavenly father you promised through your son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith we pray for the Church of Christ throughout the world, that our church may be united in Christ for the fulfillment of the mission you have given to the ministers of your gospel. We pray especially for the members of Methodist Church Nigeria and all Christians who confess your name, that they may be united in your truth and live together in your love so that your glory may be revealed to the world. Amen. Inspire and strengthen our prelates, His Eminence, Dr. Oliver Ali Abba. Archbishops using the Archbishop of Lagos Archdiocese, the Most Reverend Dr. Ayola Wuyi. And all ministers of the gospel using the chaplain of Wesley Chapel Lekki, the very Reverend Dr. Ayo Richards as point of four co point contacts to them all that we may be faithful in the administration of your sacraments. Bless and guide our presidents, 
Ashwajobola Ahmed Tinubu, and all governors using Baba Jide Sonwolu of Lagos as point of contact. Give wisdom to all who are in authority and direct this nation and all the nations in the way of justice and peace. Let's pray that wars we cease from the ends of the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Take away from our nations all that tend to divide us, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. Give grace to us, our families, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in love, in one another, and love as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those members of us who are mourning their loved ones right now, using Brother Wilson energy as a point of contact. Father, we pray you will console them in the mighty name of Jesus. Give courage and hope to those in troubles and bring them all to the joy of your presence. We remember at this time those who have died in the faith and service of Christ, especially ministers of the gospel whom you have called home to yourself. Grant to them according to, our, to your promises a share in your eternal kingdom. We also rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints. We commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. At this junction, quietly raise up your, quietly bring your request to the throne of glory, knowing that the Lord is with us and that he will speedily answer us and manifest his glory in our lives. Let's round up our prayers. Most merciful Father, I serve these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We shall sing the hymn 444. Beloved, let us love. Hymn 444. We shall, we shall collect the welfare funds while we sing this thing.
Dear people of God, as we remain standing, let us reach out for our Holy Communion manual. We turn to page 8, the offertory prayers on top of that page we shall all say together. Receive, O God, this offering of bread and wine and our arms, representing the fruit of your creation as token of our love. Accept also the offering of our lives that we may serve the cause of your kingdom and fulfillment of your will. Amen. The Lord is here. Amen. Then lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Truly, it is right and good to glorify you at all times and in all places, to offer you our thanksgiving, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Through your living word, you created all things and pronounced them good. You made human beings in your own image to share your life and reflect your glory. When the time had fully come, you gave Christ to us as the life of the world. He accepted baptism and consecration as your servant to announce the good news to the poor. At the Last Supper, Christ gave to us the Eucharist that we should celebrate the memorial of the cross and resurrection and receive his presence as the bread of life. Therefore, Lord, with the angels and all the saints, we proclaim and sing your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Lord King of the universe. You are holy and your glory is beyond measure. Upon this Eucharist, send your life-giving spirit. May the outpouring of this spirit make this meal of bread and wine become for us the body and blood of Christ. May this creator spirit accomplish the words of your beloved son, who in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Lord, as he has commanded us, we do this in remembrance of him, and we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant by the power of your Holy Spirit that we who receive your gift of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of Christ and grant to the people everywhere the benefits of Christ's redemptive work. As we partake of Christ's body and blood, fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may be one single body and one single spirit in Christ a living sacrifice to the praise of your glory. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another with the sign of the peace. Peace of the Lord be with you. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of blessings for which we give thanks is the communion in the blood of Christ. Please we all sit as we take the prayer of humble access, item number 20, reverently together. Lord, we come to your table trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, while we wait to be invited to the table, let us reflect on the message we had tonight. Let us reflect on the love of God. God was the first to love us when he gave us his very best, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ has commanded us to love as he loved us and as he continues to love us. Let us ask for strength, the grace to love without hypocrisy. Beloved, all things are ready. Communicants will come forward. If you are not a communicant and you want to come, please come, but fold your hands. Don't accept the elements. The ministers will bless you.
People of God, let us have a moment of silence. In silence, let us worship God. Let us appreciate him for his love. Let us thank God for the grace to be alive today. Hail and hearty. Let us thank God for our salvation, for the blood that our Savior Jesus Christ shed as ransom for our redemption. Let us thank God for the gifts and the presence of our God, our teacher, our comforter, the Holy Spirit in our lives. At the celebration of the Eucharist, the risen Christ stands in our midst, the Son of Righteousness with healings in his wings. And so the power to heal is available. The power to heal broken bodies. The power to heal aggrieved spirits and troubled minds. Troubled relationships and marriages and families. Troubled businesses. Troubled finances. The power to heal to set free. To deliver from bondage. That power is available. The power for protection against all assaults of enemies. The power to restore total wholeness to our bodies. That power is available. The power to heal is available. So claim it. Claim healing. Claim healing for family members, for friends, and those who have asked us to pray for them for healing. We pray for all our church members who are sick, wherever they might be, that that power to heal will be made available to them. And those who are recovering, that the Lord will perfect their healing. The good work of healing that he has started, he will bring to perfection. Healing. The celebration of the Lord's Supper. The Prince of Peace stands in our midst. So let us claim peace. Peace for a troubled nation. Peace for troubled homes and marriages and relationships. Peace for the church of God. Peace in our places of work. Peace in our lives. Let us ask for peace. That the peace of God will be planted in the recesses of our hearts. Where nothing can disturb it or steal it. At the celebration of the Holy Communion, we have a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, the marriage supper of the Lamb. So let us pray that on that day we shall not be missing at that gathering. That the Lord will write our names permanently in the book of life. Now let us ask for strength for every moment of temptation or test that can come our way at any time, that the Holy Spirit will strengthen us to overcome. Because the scripture tells us that those who think they stand should beware lest they fall. Let us pray that the Almighty God will uphold us with his right hand of righteousness. He will lead us in a providential way. We shall not fail, we shall not fall, we shall not falter. We shall never be tempted beyond what we can bear. And that the Almighty God at every point will make a way of escape for us. Let us give thanks to God. For we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, we turn to page 13, item 27, Holy Communion Manual. The Gloria, we all stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the only one. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high. 
Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Please be seated. Beloved, we thank you very much for being part of this service tonight. This is the Holy Week, Wednesday in Holy Week. Tomorrow we have the Monday, Thursday service, same time, 6 p.m. Please let us all be here. And on Friday, Good Friday, the service is at 9 a.m., Good Friday. Then we come back on Saturday to go through the closing of the 2024 Lent season at 6 p.m. The service to round up the Lent season on Saturday, Holy Saturday, 6 p.m. By the grace of God, the Lord will usher us into a beautiful Easter with all our family members home and abroad. Amen. We shall be in good health, Amen. fullness of joy, Amen. and peace of mind. Amen. And the Lord will provide for all our needs Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So as usual, the service starts at 8 a.m. when we have our Sunday tonic, 8 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. That's the adult Sunday school where you can come and ask questions, make comments, not necessarily only on the topic being discussed, but anything of interest as far as the church, Christianity is concerned, you can come and ask questions. So please let us come early, 8 a.m. for the Sunday tonic, and 9 we have the service itself. It shall be a wonderful Easter for us in Jesus' name. And if the Lord tarries, 2025, Lent and Easter, none of us will be missing. Amen. Our thanksgiving will be more than this year's own. Amen. Our joy will be more Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please let us stand for the closing prayers and benediction. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, you were the first to love us. You love us so much. And you demonstrated it that it was at the same, at the time that we were still sinners, rebellious, opposed to your will, that you made Christ Jesus to die for our sins, to deliver us from bondage to sin and its power, and to give us the gift of eternal life, and to empower us by your spirit to live a victorious life, the life of the redeemed. Lord, if we had a thousand tongues, they will not be enough to say thank you. Let that love never be removed from us. Amen. Lord, any root of bitterness, any root of any vice that opposes your perfect will for our lives, that negates the love, all the definitions of love that we have had today, Father, take them away from us. Amen or put them from us. Amen. Plant your love in our hearts. Amen. Let us love as you love. Amen. Thank you, gracious Father. Amen. And so as we go to our dwelling places tonight, let your presence go with us. Amen. Lord, let our dwelling places be filled with your glory. Amen. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, let your protection surround our dwelling places. Amen. No evil will come near us. Amen. No plague will come near our dwelling place. And henceforth, let no man trouble us, for we bear in our bodies the marks of the Lord Jesus. And so unto the gracious hands of the Almighty God, we commend ourselves. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.